Hey everyone, my name is Mai and welcome to my kitchen where I try to recreate dishes from some of my favorite restaurants and vendors at home using simple home cooking methods. Now last week I tried to recreate Uncle Rikuro's Jiggly Japanese Cheesecake. I couldn't possibly try and recreate one of Osaka's famous cheesecake without attempting the other one. So this week I tried to recreate Pablo's famous cheese tart. Now this cheese tart is actually quite interesting. It's kind of like Pablo's modern take on the traditional cheesecake. What it is in essence, it's got a sort of like flaky pet pizza crust and a sort of predominantly cream cheese filling topped with a beautiful and glossy apricot glaze. Now in Japan, customers can choose how they'd like their tart to be baked. Either rare, which has got a sort of like more gooey and lava-like consistency, or medium, which is more firm and fluffy. Now I'm going to show you guys how I've done it using my simple home cooking ways and hopefully you guys might find it useful as well. So yeah, hope you enjoy! First off, we're going to create a flaky short crust pastry for the base. You can find the list of ingredients in the description box. Start by adding butter and salt into the flour and rub everything together until you get a coarse breadcrumb-like texture. You can of course do this with a stand mixer if you have one. However, in some of the videos that I've seen, the French men were all doing this by hand, so I thought I'd give myself a challenge as well. Then, start adding the egg and gradually combine it with the rest of the dough. Next up, add the water, then continue working on the dough until it starts to come together and shape it into a smooth dough ball. Transfer the dough onto a work surface and using the palms of your hands, gently press down the dough. This will help flatten the butter and give the dough a more flaky finish. Now do this only once. Remember not to over knead your dough or your crust will become very tough. Then gather your dough back into a bowl, wrap it with cling film and flatten it into a disc. Proceed by refrigerating it for at least an hour. Once the dough is ready, flour your work surface. I saw the French pastry chefs beat the dough using their rolling pin, so here I am doing the same. Now start rolling out your dough in all directions, upwards, sideways, diagonally, until you get a large surface with about 2 to 3 millimeters of thickness. Using the pan as a reference, I'm cutting a large dough disc with a radius of about 4 to 5 centimeters wider than the pan itself. This will form the walls of the tart, so choose how tall you want them to be. Now, let's remove the excess dough once you're done. Using the rolling pin, I'm going to gently transfer the dough on top of my pan. You can sprinkle some flour on top of the dough and the rolling pin to make this easier. Then, I'm going to pleat the sides of the dough disc and let it gently slide into the pan. Do some minor adjustments and gently press the dough so that it holds its shape inside the pan. Next, we're going to prepare the dough for some blind baking, which is the process of baking the dough on its own before adding the filling later on. We're going to dock the dough by poking some holes in the base using a fork. Doing this will prevent the crust from puffing up during the process. We're then going to line the dough pan with some baking paper. You can use aluminum foil for this process as well. Fill the pan with some whey to stop the crust from bubbling up and shrinking during blind baking. I didn't have any so I used some uncooked rice grains instead. Now we're ready for the oven. I'm baking the crust for an initial 15 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius. The crust should be done with the first round of blind baking at this point. Take it out of the oven and remove the weights. Prepare some egg wash by mixing together an egg yolk and a tablespoon of milk. Apply the egg wash onto the crust and return it to the oven to bake for a further 5-10 to 10 minutes until it gets a nice golden colour. Now let's prepare the cream cheese filling. Add the cream cheese, mascarpone and sugar, then start mixing it until it becomes smooth and creamy. Occasionally, feel free to release some of your frustration into the batter once you realize that you should have used a hand mixer for this instead. Next up, add the milk and mix until everything becomes smooth. 
If you want your filling to be even more gooey and liquid, add a bit more milk than I did at this point. Sift in the cornstarch and continue mixing until there are no more clumps. You should end up with a smooth and glossy mixture. I used 6x3 inch pans which were a bit too tall so I decided to transfer the crust onto a lined baking tray instead as it would have been much more difficult for me to remove the tarts from the pan later on. Start filling the crust with the cream cheese filling that you had just prepared. I'm also using a spatula to even out the surface and make it look smoother. If you've got any egg wash left, use the remainder on the crust to ensure that it gets a nice shiny coating. Once that's done, let's bring it to the oven. For this video, I'm baking my cheese tart for 15 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius to achieve a medium bake. However, if you'd like a rare consistency, consider taking the cheese tart out about 5 minutes earlier. I have some examples of this gooey lava-like consistency on my Instagram page if you'd like to have a look. While the tarts are in the oven, let's make the glossy apricot glaze. For this very basic glaze, I've used some apricot jam that I've gotten from the supermarket, add in some water and bring everything to a boil whilst continually mixing. Keep stirring and let the mixture reduce until you get a smooth and sticky jelly-like consistency. Once the glaze is ready, I like to pass it through a strainer to make sure that it comes out smooth without any clumps. Make sure to make the glaze close to when your tart is coming out of the oven because we don't want the glaze to solidify, otherwise you'll have to melt it again. Now for the fun part. I've taken the tart out of the oven. We're now going to apply the apricot glaze on the surface and let it rest for a bit so that it sets before plating everything up. It's now time for the taste test. What I love the most about this cheese tart is the blend of textures. You got the crispy and flaky crust combined with a creamy filling and topped with a beautiful sticky apricot glaze. The tart itself is super light with a creamy consistency. It's not too sweet. You can taste a bit of the tartness from the cream cheese. The apricot glaze works really well in adding a bit of sharper sweetness to the tart. Try consuming this tart right after baking it and compare it to once it's been refrigerated. The texture and taste is surprisingly different, but equally delicious. Try it yourself and let me know which one you prefer. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching guys. I really hope you guys found this video useful. Now if you'd like to see me recreate some more restaurant dishes at home, remember to hit like and also subscribe. And if you'd like to check out some more of my cooking, do visit my blog and also follow me on my Instagram. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!